Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is for future renters and also future buyers of the Rockwood Mini Light 2509S. We're going to do a full walkthrough for you today. So we'll start here at the front cap. Uh, to me, it just looks great. I really like the window and I think that it just kind of sets that whole front cap off. So it does come standard with an electric tongue jack, uh, two 30 pound propane tanks. It does have one lead acid battery. We have the uh, standard stabilizer jacks on this unit. I actually preferred this over the power stabilizer jacks. I've heard that they do give some trouble and they aren't very strong. So on the side we have a switch for the docking lights, which are on the front. We also have the fresh water tank fill. And the fresh water tank is 54 gallons. Uh, the gray water tank is 30 gallons and the black water tank is also 30 gallons. Now coming up to the front storage, they are a little bit quirky. As you can see, it's got a strange setup here. And this is the backside of the Murphy bed. And this is also part of the Murphy bed couch area. But you still have a pass through storage. Uh, there's the other doors on the other side, goes all the way through. And you still kind of get this area and up here to store things. Uh, so it works and it is pretty large, but uh, it's just a little different from your standard front storage. Uh, it also uses magnetic latches and they also use frameless windows on this unit. Uh, it comes standard with the slide topper and this is a 40 inch slide. And it is a rack and pinion slide, which is uh, one of the more reliable units. One of my favorite things about the camper is uh, since you have this quirky storage going on over here, uh, you got two more areas you can store things in the slide. I really like this tall storage. Let's see, open it up and uh, it's carpeted down on the bottom. And then it goes all the way to the top of the slide. And you could probably get some fishing poles in there, maybe a set of water skis, something like that. And then you have the smaller storage. And inside, which we have a, a rug, an outdoor rug, uh, but this is the bottom of the dinette. And it goes all the way around. You can see the other side of the dinette, hopefully. And those are our storage drawers that we'll see inside. One thing I really like about Rockwood is the build quality. As you can see, it has an aluminum frame under the dinette. Uh, the beds are the same way. And the entire trailer uses aluminum framing uh, all the way around, even the roof trusses. Okay, coming around to the back side of the slide, uh, we have our fresh water connection, city water connection. This is for antifreeze. This is your black tank flush. And I do have these, uh, have red tape on these just so renters will not use these two connections. Also you have cable and satellite connections here. And you also have an outdoor shower. So in your outdoor shower, of course you have hot and cold water and you have the shower nozzle that comes out. Okay, on the back side of the slide you have a standard window and the reason they use this instead of a frameless is so it could uh, run through this seal easily without tearing the seal. Another great thing about this trailer, it comes already equipped from the factory with Goodyear Endurance tires. That is a 14 inch and an alloy wheel another thing i really like probably one of the things that sold me the most on a rockwood are the torsion axles uh, you don't find these on a lot of campers and on our cargo trailer conversion it has torsion axles and they were an absolute game changer for towing uh, they are so super smooth coming around this way we have our 
gray water and our black tank uh, dump here. And there's another window on the back. This is actually in the bathroom, which not sure I really care for uh, or understand for, for that matter. Okay, uh, this uses a 30 amp connection. Did come with a spare tire uh, mounted to the back. It's not a good year uh, endurance, but it is a spare tire. It also comes with a two inch receiver on the back. Uh, it does have a 300 pound weight limit, which I find a little underwhelming, but it is what it is. We also have the ladder on the back and we have a HaloView BT7 camera system and it is great. Go check our video out on that. Uh, coming around to the camping side, it does have an 18 foot awning and it is a Solera, which I believe is a Lippert product. Uh, you also have a spray port here beside the outdoor kitchen. Uh, there's a hose that is stored in here that uh, you connect to this and it has a water hose in and you can have hot or cold water so you could wash off if you've uh, been to the beach maybe spray your feet off and this is the outdoor kitchen so we have a small fridge here and you also have a two burner stove here which uh, I'm gonna need two hands to get it out so you just need to press these two blue levers down at the same time and pull out on the stove and it comes way out it's very nice and you do have your two burners there we also have some storage up top and this is your hose for the spray port this is the outside kitchen underneath the outside kitchen you have two propane quick connect there's one here this is just below the two burner stove and there's a hose underneath the stove that connects to it and then you also have this other one here that sits just down from it and rockwood has this track that runs along the side where you can mount uh, from the factory you get a griddle that mounts here and also a small table uh, we did get the small table unfortunately because we bought it used the original owner kept the griddle but we will be getting a griddle and i will figure out a way to make it work with the hanger that came from the factory so starting up top you've got your outdoor speakers you have a tv hanger you can move the tv from the inside to the outside um, you've got your cable connection here and you have a gfci outlet it does use a Suburban 35,000 BTU furnace and a Suburban 6-gallon um, electric and propane hot water heater. Uh, this is a vent for the fan above the stove. And, of course, you also get the grab handle, which is pretty standard on everything now. So you also get the step above steps, which are made by Moride, and they are gas strut assisted. So you can pull up on these things and they basically levitate. And if you pull up a little more, they will go up by themselves, but they will slam closed. So I'll grab hold of that. That just makes it really easy to put these up and to get these back out. I've mounted the outdoor table uh, that hangs on the rack just down from your outside kitchen pretty nice size maybe uh, 12 to 14 inches wide probably 12 inches deep maybe a little more very nice though for preparing food so this is your front storage on the other side on the camping side and as you can see it's uh, basically laid out the same way uh, I do have the other side open so you can see straight through and there is a good amount of space in there to store uh, anything you want. Camp chairs, boxes, grills, whatever you need. Uh, it is wired for external solar panels if you wanted to add those. 
before we make our way inside i want to show you these few things about the door uh, the door does use friction hinge hinges uh, and also along with that there is a bumper for the door keeps you from hitting the awning arm they also include a lock for the door which is locked in place now so you can open the uh, the bigger door close the screen door and this will stay in place I have noticed that even though this camper uses friction hinges they don't seem to be quite as strong which honestly I'm not upset about that because our kids have a hard time opening and closing the door anyway uh, it does do a uh, a good enough job to hold it open in a light wind uh, but on a heavier wind I have locked this couple times to just hold the door open and then we can use the screen door so as you can see there is a screenshot system and what this does I would assume it's spring loaded and it pulls this little piece in and it closes the door every single time kind of slams it but that's okay so let's go inside and see what we got. So when you first walk in, uh, you notice this nice comfy couch and it is actually comfortable. We looked at several campers that used this same Murphy bed system with a couch and they were just downright terrible. Uh, not something you would ever want to spend your day uh, sitting in, watching it rain outside you would be miserable. Now one thing to note about this, it does have a footrest that pops out on each side and they fly out of there pretty quick so so now on my foot. So you've got the footrest. Uh, it doesn't recline but it can't recline because it would hit the Murphy bed uh, but the footrest is very nice when you're just hanging out on the couch all day and watching TV. And here we have the uh, Murphy bed folded down. Well, it is not a full size queen bed, but it is a queen from side to side. Uh, you're losing about six inches of length. Um, I'm six feet tall. If I lay straight out, my feet will hang off the edge, but really not that much. And when I sleep, I don't, eat, I don't lay like that anyway, so it doesn't matter. So it uh, doesn't really bother me. It is a memory foam mattress that was put in here before we bought it. It sleeps great and it's been awesome. This is how you raise the bed. It's not very hard. You need to pull this knob out and you lift up on the bed. It does have uh, some sort of gas or pneumatic assisted struts on there. And then you put that in place, slaps that. Come on, latch this. So to get the couch back where it is, where it should be, uh, you're gonna lift this part up and then you're gonna grab the back and pull a little bit and then push down. Easy as that. Okay, on this side, you have a control panel of sorts. Uh, you have a charge center here with a 12 volt plug and also two USB plugs that are 12 volt. So that runs on the battery. Uh, you also have an inverter circuit. Um, this camper does have a 1000 watt inverter. And this is a light switch for the lights above the bed. On each side of the Murphy bed, you have a closet with a ton of space. And it does have hangers. I think we're going to build a shelf somewhere about this high uh, in this closet so we can put our baskets where we store our clothes and the other side we're going to leave open and we have a few sheets stored in there but there's the hanger you also get a storage drawer underneath this plant and it is a pretty deep drawer And again, you get the same thing on the other side. On the opposite side, you have the controls for the inverter. Again, this is a WFCO 1000 watt inverter. And it is only connected to a few plugs uh, within the camper. 
Okay, coming over to the front side of the kitchen, you have two storage drawers. We have them stuffed full of things now. And then this bottom is an access drawer, which just has a panel right behind it, but you can remove the panel to get to the back side of the hot water heater. It comes with the IRV Technologies uh, two zone radio. It does have a uh, Bluetooth, AM, FM, I believe it'll play DVDs. It is hooked to the TV, so I'm sure it will. Uh, there is an app that you can use to control uh, interior lights, exterior lights. You can open the awning, open the slide, close the awning and the slide. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, which brings up these switches here. Um, I believe this had a different type of antenna on top. We have a different system up top. We don't have Wi-Fi, so this button really does nothing. Uh, jumping back this way, it lets you test your battery. Uh, it is full, your fresh tank, which is empty, black tank, which is empty, and your gray tank, which is empty. Uh, of course, these are the tanks that you'll be keeping an eye on while you're camping. Uh, fresh water if you're boondocking, and black and gray if you're at a campground and you're taking showers in here or washing dishes. Uh, your gray water is going to fill up pretty quick, so you'll have to keep an eye on these, especially that gray water. So if you're boondocking and you're using your fresh water tank, you'll be using this water pump. Uh, that is a 12 volt system, and that's how you get water when you're not connected to shore power. Uh, it does have a gas side to your water heater, and you turn it on this way, and an electric side. Uh, the electric is what you would normally use, and then you can use gas as a backup, or if you're boondocking and you don't have shore power, uh, you would use gas. You also have tank heaters on here. They are 12 volt. So if you're boondocking and you have fresh water in there, uh, you can turn the tank heaters on and it'll keep those from freezing. And that's not just fresh water that keeps all three tanks from freezing. Uh, you have your awning button, retract, extend, and your slide out button in and out. And then these switches are a little different from your standard switches because when you press them, they don't actually flip up and a light doesn't turn on, uh, which was kind of strange at first. So that's your interior light, which turns the uh, center lights on and off. And then you have your porch, your awning, and your step light. Now the reason these are built the way they are with the little spring-loaded switch that goes right back to where it was uh, is because you can control those functions with this app. So down below that, you have a GFCI outlet, and you also have your solar charge controller. It is go power. And uh, we have a solar panel up top that I'll show you. But just below all those, you have a vent for your heater. And again, that's a 35,000 BTU. Uh, the kitchen counter has an extension. Of course, you have the uh, standard sink here. So it does have solid surface countertops. Uh, they, these don't soak water in. You don't have to worry about those rotting away. Uh, very nice. Uh, you got a couple outlets here and a couple USB plugs. So that, it, that is nice and convenient for the kitchen area because you don't have anywhere else that you can have an outlet. So of course our coffee maker is plugged into that every morning. And you can just drop it back down and push it again and it locks in place. Uh, the frameless windows kind of have an old school feel to them uh, because you turn these out and I always turn them the wrong way. There we go. Turn them to the right to open them and they open up just the bottom folds out or goes out. And I really like that because that keeps rain out. So uh, it's pretty cool, but I do remember our old camper when we were growing up had these same style windows. They didn't look as good on the outside, but the inside looked a whole lot like that. So you do have a three burner stove. These fold up, fold back like that. And then down here you have a 21 inch oven, which is a good size for a camper. These also have lights. Uh, you turn this, turn this down for the light in the oven, and then you can turn it up 
and it lights these knobs up and they look really cool. Up above that you have your vent. Uh, there is a light underneath and also of course the fan. It also comes with a Magic Chef microwave. And a Furion TV. And I can't remember if this is a 32 or a 37, but it's big enough that you will enjoy it. It looks great from over there or over there. Also, it is mounted on a swivel mount. So you can pull the TV out here. It's hard to do with one hand. You can turn it whichever way you would like. If you want to point it towards the uh, couch, you can, or point it towards the dinette, or kind of give it an in-between so you can see it from both locations. Okay, also in the kitchen, you have a good amount of storage. Uh, you got this fold-out deal at the top, and then you have three storage drawers. And this vent is for the furnace. That's the back side of the furnace. And while we're down here, uh, this is your control panel where you have your breakers and your fuses. Uh, just beside that is a meter or a monitor, I suppose, for our surge protector. We do have a hardwired surge protector, so you, we don't have to worry about uh, carrying one around and getting it stolen. And then there's another vent for the heater. Uh, this is a 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt fridge. It's a Magic Chef. And it has a ton of room in it. So, uh, What's making all the noise? It's the uh, Coleman Mach. This is a 15,000 BTU AC unit. And it is controlled here by the thermostat. You can control your AC and heat all on this one thermostat. Uh, you have another GFCI outlet and then a carbon monoxide monitor. And then you have this nice storage we have all sorts of stuff. And these uh, these aren't very deep, but as you can see, you can get quite a few things in there. It does go back a little ways, so you got a little more room. Uh, overall, very nice. For a small camper, it has a lot of storage. Um, the door down below is an access door. So behind this panel is a water filter, uh, which I believe is standard on all Rockwoods. Just beside that uh, access door, we have storage under the dinette. And there's a good amount, a nice deep drawer here. And these are solid wood, very nice. You also have one on the other side of the dinette and this table does fold down and the dinette can make a full-size bed and it seems bigger than a full size to me it's very big uh, but we can easily fit our family of five here and eat with no issues uh, no one fighting well i mean not over room anyway we've got it transformed into sleep mode uh, this is the dinette and this is a huge bed uh, yes, these cushions do move around, but we're working on a few things to keep that from happening. Uh, maybe some sort of non-slip type stuff under the mattresses and on top of the table. And then also a fitted sheet that's going to fit that nicely. I think it will sleep great. My son slept there on the last trip we were on, and he had no complaints, but he's also six. Uh, but you know what? I think it's a comfortable bed. I laid on it with him, and it works out great. We do have blackout shades here on all the windows. There it goes. So we have shades like that on all the windows except the kitchen window which uses blinds. Up top we do have storage in these drawers. And they go all the way through. We have a few board games hidden there. 
I did not know that. So the same on the other side. Uh, you also get a light above the, the dinette that you control separately from your main lights. And also this giant storage here, a nice pantry among other things. It's a very deep storage and it does have a hanging rack here but it also has shelves that are removable. And that is a lot of storage for a small camper. Headed to the back, we have two giant bunks here. Uh, these are four inch pads, they're very soft. They each have a window. The top bunk has its own AC vent. It also has two USB plugs and controls for the light that is up top. And the bunk below has one light that you control by pressing the center of it. Also has two USB plugs and it has a standard outlet and also a window. Uh, the lower bunk can be raised, at least one side of it. And you can use the latch back there to latch it up and it gives you all the space to store things. Okay, on to the bathroom. So in the bathroom you have your sink, vanity, uh, you got storage under here a little bit. You got a lot of plumbing back there behind this separator, but you also have you know room for toilet paper and things like that. You have this little fold out storage. Uh, above your sink you have this nice little shelf that's uh, made to hold toothbrushes and a cup. And above that we have our medicine cabinet and lots of stuff inside. Uh, just beside that is the bathroom window which I don't really understand. Kind of wish they didn't have that. Uh, we do have a towel rack, but we could have hung some hooks or something up here towards the top and gotten a little more storage. With a family of five, we have uh, quite a few towels. We do get a Dometic porcelain foot flush toilet. There's the foot flush over there on that side. And also, it does come with a tub, which is great for the kids. It also comes with a water miser, shower miser, something like that, that wasn't installed, but we do have it. So I may need to put that on, and that is made to save water uh, when you're boondocking. So we plan to try some boondocking in this trailer, so we may have to uh, get that installed before we go. So I am six feet tall, and I can stand in here and take a somewhat comfortable shower, and my head is not inside of that. It's close, but not all the way. You have a max air fan with a max air vent cover over it so it doesn't rain inside. And we also have a couple towel racks hung above the toilet and on the door. And this is your light switch for the bathroom. Okay, before it gets dark, I wanna show you guys the roof. It is fully walkable. And this is the skylight above the shower. This is our max air vent uh, that's in the bathroom. So this is your vent for your tanks. And I believe this is a ceiling vent that vents the uh, inside of the ceiling. This is your AC unit. And this is the Weingard Air 360 Plus that was installed before we got the unit. It also comes with a GoPower 190 watt solar panel. We put the max air vent over the vent that's above the Murphy bed in case we left the vent open. It won't rain inside. And guys, that uh, about does it for our full walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any comments or questions about the camper, please leave those below and we'll get right back to you on those. Other than that, be sure to check out all our other videos on our channel and we'll catch you guys next time.